Hi everyone, welcome back. This is MLOP Zoom Camp Session 6 and in this section we talk about best engineering practices. So far we covered a lot of ground when it comes to code quality. So we talked about testing the code, we talked about integration tests, we talked about linting and formatting and we came up with a lot of commands that we need, we need to execute. So if, for example, um, if we want to sort our imports, we need to use iSort. For formatting, we need to use black. Then for linting, for checking code quality, we need to use pylint. And then for running tests, we need to use pytest command. So that's quite a lot of commands. And we might accidentally forget to execute these commands. We have to run tests constantly and we might accidentally forget to run them. In this case, what we can do to make sure we do not forget this is to execute this code before we commit to git. Before even our code gets in git, in the code repository, we run the tests and we can do all these things here. And for that, we can use pre-commit hooks. So if I Google uh, git hooks, there are actually many of them. So this is something that we can do in git. So there is post commit, something that after the commit is done, is run. Pre-commit is something before you can commit. And yeah, there are many hooks that we can run. And one that we are interested in is git uh, pre-commit hook. So yeah, pre-commit hook, you run before you commit. And there is a nice tool for that. It's called pre-commit. It's actually pre-committed. This is a Python tool. So it's called pre-commit. And this is the tool. And we can install it using pip. So this is the Python tool. And we will use pipn for installing it. So I am right now in the code directory and I activated our virtual environment. So what we can do now is to pip env install dev recommit and then we will have it in our environment. What it allows us to do is to define these pre-commit hooks. Actually, um, I can show you that in git, so I will go to any git repo, so for example for mlops zoom camp, there is a folder called git, so if we can if we can go to this folder and we can see things here and there is a folder called hooks and there is this pre-commit sample, right, so we can take a look at this pre-commit sample and this is an example, this is a shell file, shell script that we can run before every commit and this is a sample, so this is not, there is no pre-commit hook yet. If we put a file, a bash script here, then git will run it every time we try to commit. What this pre-commit library is doing is it helps us define this pre-commit script and all these hooks. So I will go back now. And right now this is actually not a git repository. So pre-commit hooks, they are executed for a git repo. Here we have a very big repo. So we have all these modules from module 1 to module 6 but we only want to run pre-commit hooks for this specific folder for this folder slash code so we don't want to run it for all the commits we have in uh, our mlops zoom camp repo what we can do is we can pretend that this code is a separate repo so for example it can be a repo what, that we create in github just for this specific project and for that we can just we can make it standalone we can just do git init and that creates an empty repository in this folder. So now we can actually see that there is a folder git. So it used to be a part of this thing, but now we can think of this as a separate thing. It will not be. After recording this video, I will remove this git file. But for now, for the purposes of this video, we can pretend that this is a standalone repo that we created in GitHub separately, right? And it contains all this code. Now we have this pre-commit tool. So I can just run it. So it says that the config file does not exist. So we actually need to create it. And there is a way to create a sample config file. I don't remember the command. I can just uh, look it up. Yeah, this sample config. So I can just do pre-commit sample config. So this is an example how it might look like. It just outputs these two standard output. So it just shows it to us how it might look like. It doesn't create the actual file here. So we need to write it to this location. So I will execute it one more time. This time I will redirect all the output of this command to this YAML file. So now we have this file with this content. And let me now open it with Visual Studio Code. I am not a fan of formatting YAML like this. So let me change it a little bit. So I will do it like this. 
and I prefer in YAML to use two spaces in a tab, not four. So I'll just set it to two. Yeah. So what we have here is a bunch of pre-commit hooks that are already av available that come pre-packaged with the, the pre-commit library. So it checks trailing white spaces, it checks end of file things, it checks if YAML is uh, valid, uh, and it checks that there are no large files. So this is, the, especially the last one is pretty useful one. And let's see how we can execute this. Remember we have this uh, git file. So in this git file, uh, git folder, we have uh, hooks and right now it's just samples. We need to create a pre-commit hook and pre-commit can actually help us do this. So we can do pre-commit install and it creates a hook in this location. So now when we do ls hooks, we see that there is a file here and we can take a look at this file. So git hooks pre-commit. And yeah, this is this was generated by pre-commit. So you see that there is a bunch of stuff. So it says where the Python is and what it needs to execute every time we want to make a commit. So it is before we make a commit. And actually, so this thing dot git folder, we do not commit this to git. It's always local, which means that Everyone on the team, when they get a fresh copy of a repo, they need to run this pre-commit install. And then the pre-commit hooks will be installed. So it doesn't happen automatically. And we need to run it only once. So we clone a repo. And then the first thing we do, we install the environment. Uh, we do pip env install minus minus dev. We install the environment. And then we install the pre-commit hook. Right? And then we have it. Let me show you how it works. So now if I do git status, because it, it's a new repo. Remember, we pretend that this is a standalone repo. So all the things here are untracked. So I will actually create a git, uh, git ignore file now. And I will put this pycache here. I don't want to commit it. So what we have git status. And now let's add everything, git add everything. So now everything becomes tracked. So all these files. And now we want to commit them. So I do git commit, something like initial commit or something like this. And you see it now, yeah, it is initializing the environment. It's doing something. Yeah, it is running the commit hook. And you see that actually, yeah, it says that we're trimming trailing white spaces. It failed, but it actually modified the files. So even though it failed, it did change the files. And then, um, yeah, it also fixed the fixed end of files. Um, yeah, I did a bunch of things. And now we can see if we do git status again, we see that these are the files that pre-commit hook modified. We can do git diff to see what exactly it did. And yeah, it, uh, like, I don't know, added a new line, I guess. Uh, yeah, it removed uh, new lines. Yeah, so it just did a bunch of things that uh, that are considered good practices, I guess. And now we can just do git commit or git add first and do git commit uh, fixes from pre commit default default hooks. And now you see everything passed. And then uh, because uh, this script that we have pre commit hook, it finished with a zero error code, it allowed git to actually commit something. So now if we do git status, yeah, nothing to commit because, and if we check git log, we see this in our log. So a commit was made. Okay. So these are the commit hooks we have. We can actually have a lot more things. So there are, first of all, there are built-in hooks. Now you can check here. Uh, so for example, this one check JSON. It checks that all the JSON files have a parsable JSON syntax and things like this. So there are quite a lot of uh, interesting things here. Check it out. Well, this one, for example, looks quite interesting. Detect private keys. Yeah, but um, what we need to do now is uh, see how we can include these tools. I sort black pylint pytest. And for this, we can just check Google pre commit I know, I sort. And yeah, so here is using I sort with pre commit. And then there is an example of how we can do this. So I can just copy this thing, put it here and format it a little bit. And this is our 
pre-commit hook that we can use with sort. So it actually goes here to this one and fetches the code for the hook from there. So it uses the stack and runs high sort. So let's see how what exactly it's doing. So git status. I'll just add this pre-commit and do git commit. Uh, I don't know test. Maybe not very informative message. Yeah, it is uh, initializing again because it needs to download this thing again. And I sort. I'm not sure why it passed because probably we didn't modify any Python files. That's why just okay. There are no Python files. That's why. I can just keep. So what we can do is we can add now all these things, uh, all these things here, black, pylint, pytest, and try to execute pre-commit hooks for everything. So then the second thing I want to check is uh, black, black pre-commit. So I think this is how we just do this. Then language version would be 3.9. Uh, perhaps we need to specify a version here, so we can quickly check what version we use. Black. And this is this version, so I hope it will work. I don't know, maybe it should be the... Yeah. Then what else we need? Let me check PyLint. PyLint pre-commit, so pre-commit integration. Um, yeah, here they, uh, instead of using this syntax, so instead of uh, using a pre-built code, pre-built repo, we can just say this is the command we want to execute and these are the um, arguments. So I'll just format it slightly and I think I need to format this one as well. So I'll format it and here remember we need to add uh, this recursive y and then we also need to add tests. So I'll do pytest pre-commit. So let's see. So yeah, since the, this is the author of pre-commit, uh, probably we can trust this answer. So, so this is the thing we run, always run, and I think we need some arcs. The arcs would be yeah, tests folder. Let's see. So at least this one should run now. So do git commit test again. Git at There is an error here. I should do something like this. So let's see what we have. Yeah, for black it cannot fetch this uh, tag. So probably we need to check the releases or I think tags. So yeah, it doesn't use, uh, black doesn't have V in front. So let's see if without V it works. Oh. Okay, now I think, yeah, it can initialize black. Okay, yeah, I am wondering why there is no output here. Maybe there should be some output. So what I want to do is to check if PyTests actually work. I want to break one test. So I will just go to our test and replace this thing. Oops. Yeah, I'll add test, model test, and run. Uh, probably we need to also add this pre commit. And now do git commit test. This should fail. Yeah, good. So this is actually, it means that everything is fine. Mm, the tests are run. This is what we need. So now I can trust it. And then. You see it, it actually didn't let us commit things. So if I do git status, yeah, this thing, it's still not committed. Git add test. And yeah, what I wanted to do now is I wanted to, to show you how to actually uh, run, uh, run black and I sort for everything. So I think what we can do is we can just reinitialize our git repo. We have this git file, but I'll do on this rm rf.git and now it will be no longer, yeah, it should be rm, sorry. Now it's not no longer a git repo. I mean, it is kind of git repo, but this becomes the part of the 
old git repo right so this is a different thing so let me do git init again and now we have uh, the git repo and now we need to do pre commit install to install the pre commit hook so now we have all these things i do git add everything git commit uh, initial commit and now it will run everything and everything is committed so everything is fine but let's say if now we go and change something so for example we can change uh, something here for example break formatting so do something like this and then yeah we change some code we didn't notice that we broke the formatting and now we do a git status and we git we add the file and we add this we make a commit so new changes in the lambda function now black failed it did not exit with zero code and it says files were modified by, by this hook so we can do git status we can see that this file was actually modified we can do git diff lambda function and we can see what actually happened there so now we can do git add lambda function git status yeah there is um, yeah and it says nothing to commit because we are kind of back to the square one to the previous state right so that's why there is nothing to commit this is very useful and this saves a lot of time uh, because we don't need to constantly remember to run tests to format our code it just happens automatically when we commit code okay now i will uh, again remove the git file in the git folder so now actually the pre-commit hooks will not work for this one and i don't want to execute them for all the every time i make a commit in in this repo in the melozoom camp but when let's say you create a project for this course then i strongly encourage you to to use this okay that's all for this video so in this video we saw how to add pre git pre-commit hooks so this is our pre-commit config i think for pytest and probably for pylint there is already a module that we can just use instead of writing these things ourselves well, but we were able to see both ways of doing this so there was a pre-commit hook from black that is already configured and then uh, this we configured ourselves so we covered this so we covered git pre-commit hooks and the next thing i want to cover is make files so make files also make our life a lot easier and this is what we will see in the next video so see you soon